Okay, we talked about the quantum computer and how it's, you know, really, really fast and how, you know, it can perform computation that no classical computer can do. I mean, the, you know, expectations and, you know, they, they're just, you know, hard, they're hard to overestimate. Nonetheless, though, quantum computers are not, you know, they're, they're not, they're pot, they're not like, you know, the, they can't compute everything. Like, they still will not be able to compute incomputable functions because those, by definition, are, you know, they just can't be computed. And um, this video will also be talking about hypercomputation and uh, what that's all about. Now, hypercomputation in and of itself is just a theory. It's a, uh, it's a mathematical abstraction of, you know, the ultimate computing power. Like, if we have a hypercomputer, it could technically compute an incomputable function. But that, again, is a theoretical model. Now, we said before, quantum computers, the sum of their probabilities have to sum to 1. Now, it, it's, it, it also, for, from, we also, not only that, mathematically, a quantum, a quantum computer uh, running in polynomial time, O and O, uh, on the order of n of the k steps, is, it can actually be reduced, reduced to a uh, classical computer running in polynomial space. And uh, that would mean that um, a polynomial time algorithm for a quantum computer uh, let, me, let me phrase that. A classical computer's um, uh, polynomial space algorithms can be reduced to quantum computer polynomial time algorithms, which, is, which means they're feasible and uh, therefore an efficient algorithm because polynomial space is not, is not efficient or exponential space is even less efficient than that. And um, so a hypercomputer is, again, something that can perform a computation that no computer can do. And uh, this, the quantum computer uh, cannot, it's not a hypercomputer. Now, the, well, I just let me rephrase that. A quantum, a quantum computer is not a on the, on the qubit model. It's not a hypercomputer. If there was a way to take infinite superposition of states, then it would be a um, then it could be a hypercomputer. Now, there's also something called a Zeno machine, which is very, uh, very um, uh, abstract and again mathematical. What it does is it takes the geometric series of you know one over to two n, which is you know one half plus one four plus one eighth, as you can see, two to the n all the way to infinity. Now, basically, in every step, it's you know n, n steps. It takes you know one. Let's say in the first step, it takes one half a minute, then one fourth, then one eighth, and you know going on, going and forth. And therefore, I could perform a infinite amount of computation, you know, just just like that. And so that is, uh, if it was possible to build a uh, computer off the Zeno machine, which is uh, this so far no uh, law of flaws of physics or you know computer you know novelties or anything like that, to say that this can be you know done. But from a theoretical standpoint, it's interesting to look at to see. You know what 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 hypercomputer mathematically would look like, just you know, just for the sake of curiosity. Okay, so that will be the, the last part of the video series on the quantum computer. The, and then the last the last the last couple of videos will just be uh, wrap ups. And so this will be coming close to the end of the video series on the theory of computation, uh, the broadest you know broad topics that it covers. Nothing you know too too in depth. All right, so that's all for now. Uh, see you guys in the next video.